This is the English Wikipedia page for Scientology. Scientology, for those of you who don't know, is a religion about being super chill and normal. But back in the early 2000s, when the Church of Scientology discovered they had an entry on Wikipedia, they got super not chill and normal about it. They started removing any references to the fact that they had purchased the Cult Awareness Network in 1996, rebranded it into the new Cult Awareness Network, and turned it into, you guessed it, a cult. Now, this revealed a bit of a problem with the way that Wikipedia normally works. Since it can be edited by anyone, you just have to hope that people are being good, or at least that they don't have the energy to be bad for very long. But Scientology was none of those things, and had managed to keep their pages whitewashed for years. That is, until 2009, when the church's shenanigans were brought to the attention of ARBCOM, otherwise known as the Arbitration Committee, Wikipedia's court of last resort. You see, all Wikipedians aren't created equal. There's actually a little-known group of 15 that can step in to deliver a final verdict, in this case to completely ban the Church of Scientology from the site. But who exactly is this cabal of nerds, and how do they put an end to Wikipedia's edit wars? In Wikipedia's early days, the court of last resort was this guy, Jimbo Wales, the co-founder of Wikipedia. But I don't have to explain why having one random dude named Jimbo being the final say for every dispute on the largest single reference work ever created by humans is a bad idea. So in 2003, Jimbo founded the Arbitration Committee, the group that could keep Wikipedia together if it ever fell into chaos. Now, the Arbitration Committee is rarely called upon. They've only ever weighed in on a few hundred cases in Wikipedia's history because, most of the time, disputes don't involve a powerful cult trying to spread dangerous propaganda. It's usually just two nerds bickering over whether a half as interesting video is a reliable source. There's quite a lot that has to happen before a dispute finally reaches the committee, so to explain how that all works, here's Half as Interesting's extremely abridged guide on how to escalate a fight on Wikipedia. Step 1. The first thing you're supposed to do if you encounter some information on Wikipedia that you think is wrong is to fix it, add citations, and then explain what you did in the edit summary. And that would work just fine if human beings were well-meaning creatures who could be trusted with collective responsibility over listing sexually active popes, but they're not, so what will probably happen is someone will eventually come along and revert or override your edit. You could let it go, but are you really going to cede your authority on the sexual activity of popes? No, of course you're not. This is where the dispute resolution process begins. Step 2. If someone reverts your edit, you'll probably be tempted to revert it back and then go to their house and kill them. This is not allowed. Technically, reverts are only supposed to be used in the event of vandalism, and Wikipedia sticks to a pretty strict three-revert rule where normal users can only use three reverts on a page in a 24-hour period. The first part of the dispute resolution process needs to go down on the talk section of any given Wikipedia page. This is basically just a forum where editors can discuss possible edits to the page, but they often end up being longer than the page itself. Here, for example, is a 24,000 word thread on whether Wikipedia should spell aluminum, aluminum, or the wrong way. And yes, before you ask, the word Hitler appears 17 times in this thread, proving that sometimes you need to move on to the next step. Step 3. If you can't come to a consensus on an article's talk page, you can bring it to one of Wikipedia's 20-something notice boards. Each of these is dedicated to a different kind of dispute, ranging from style questions to source reliability to conflicts of interest. The point of these notice boards is to get some mediation from a neutral third party, highly experienced editors who volunteer as mediators, when things get too heated. The case gets filed in this form, where the dispute is summarized, past attempts to resolve the problem are detailed, and each side gives their argument. In this case, naturally, the argument is over whether a tin box counts as a tin can, which according to one editor has quote, spiraled into mayhem. The mediator suggested using the phrase tin container, which really just made everyone mad, so this dispute remains unsolved to this day. And it's only in cases like this, where the stakes are high and even an experienced mediator can't get everyone to agree, that Wikipedia's nuclear option can be activated. Step 4. The Arbitration Committee. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a group of 15 people who are voted on in annual Wikipedia elections and serve two-year terms in a role that's sort of like a Supreme Court justice if, instead of deciding whether people should have rights, they decided what a tin can was. If you truly have nowhere else to turn, you can write a 500-word summary of your dispute and file for arbitration. Now, there's a pretty good chance your case won't be heard. The committee only tends to hear cases that are particularly divisive, complex, actually important, or of special interest to Wikipedia's extremely boring dictator, Jimbo. Before hearing a case, the committee has to vote on whether to even hear it. If you get four net yes votes or a simple majority of active committee members, then it's arbitrating time. 
The committee will draft up a proposed decision and put it on the case page. From there, other editors can post relevant evidence or suggest edits to the decision, and then the committee votes on a final decision. In this case, a user named Communicat kept editing the page for World War II with citations from a historian named Stanley Weiner, a guy with no credentials but plenty of conspiracy theories, and also, apparently, a Wikipedia account named Communicat. Because no one else on Wikipedia had the power to make this guy shut up, the arbitration committee voted 13-0 to ban him from ever talking about World War II on Wikipedia again. So there you go. In just four easy steps, 30,000 words of debate, and a trial that would put the US judicial system to shame, you too can get a guy to stop being annoying online. So, given you just sat through a full six-minute video about the ins and outs of settling encyclopedia disputes, I'm going to assume that you are a person who values knowledge. You probably like to learn, but if you're out of school, finding straightforward ways to scratch that learning itch on a daily basis can be a challenge. It requires actual work to set up the more satisfying work of learning, unless, of course, you use our sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing way of keeping your brain engaged every single day with their dozens of interactive courses on almost any STEM subject you can think of. Neural networks, quantitative finance, search engines, logic, you name it. I'd personally recommend their Introduction to Probability course, which gives the fundamentals that build up into some really fascinating concepts taught in their Perplexing Probability and Casino Probability courses. I find the whole subject super interesting since it's essentially the math of decision making, and the way Brilliant teaches this is not with long explanations textbook style, but rather with fun, interactive, and straightforward activities. You're not just going to be sitting at your computer for hours reading paragraph after paragraph. Brilliant lets you learn by doing. They break down big concepts into small bite-sized chunks that you can reasonably learn with their straightforward explanations and interactive challenges, and this also means you can make progress in small chunks. You might only have 10 or 15 minutes, but if you find those minutes regularly enough, you'll make meaningful progress on understanding something huge and complex like calculus. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash HAI or click the link in the description, and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.